Hey guys, Wes Comer coming at you with another video tutorial. And this one goes along with the tutorial that I posted earlier on the blog today about recreating the look and feel of these classic movie title cards, movie title sequences. And I um, found this great gallery online. There's a link on my blog. Um, but just the, the bold topography um, with these really dramatic shadows uh, are just beautiful. There's Shop Around the Corner, one of my favorite movies of all time. And so what we want to do is try to recreate this look uh, in Photoshop. And so this is kind of what we're hoping to end up with, uh, kind of a vintage gospel uh, title card. So I'm going to walk you through the steps, and this will be fairly quick. And if you want to go back and look at the details, you can read the blog where I give you a step-by-step -step, uh, list of uh, things to do to, to end up with this. So first of all, we're going to create a new document. And I'm going to be working in 720p, which is 1280 pixels by 720 pixels. Uh, but this will work, this tutorial will work for any size that you want to set up for. Uh, if you're working in 4.3 typical projector setup, then you may be working in 1024 by 768. But as long as your resolution is 72 uh, dpi, then you should be fine. So hit OK here. And the first thing I'm going to do is fill my background layer. And I'm going to work in black and white first and then we'll, we'll drop in the color a little bit later. So I'm just going to kind of fill my background uh, with a with a mid-range gray here. I might go a little darker. And then I'm going to add my type. And we'll type vintage gospel. And the spacing is off here because I was working on a different document earlier. So we'll set that back to zero. And for the size, I'm setting it at 220 pixels. And the font I'm using, I can't remember if I just said this, is Duke from Lost Type Company. And it's a free font. You can give a, down, a donation to download it. Um, or you can just type zero in the donation box and download the font for free. Uh, it is well worth whatever you'd like to pay for it. I can assure you of that. Um, so we're going to just kind of center our text in the middle of the composition here. And now we'll start adding the shadows. So uh, just like with Philadelphia Story, let's see if I can find that one again. I have these kind of squared edges with dark shadows at a 45 degree angle. That's kind of the look we're going to go for here. So what we'll do is we'll hold down Command or Control on a PC and click our text layer and you'll see that we get the marching ants around our text. I'm going to create a new layer, put it down behind our text. We're going to fill it with black. I'm going to press Command D or Control D to uh, deselect. And then while holding the Shift key, I'm going to press the arrow buttons down and to the right and that's going to place the text at an exact 45 degree angle, uh, 10 pixels down and 10 pixels over. And so now for a filter, I'm going to go filter, blur, motion blur, and I'm going to set this to 10 pixels at a 45 degree angle or minus 45 degrees and hit OK. And you can see here that we end up with a nice uh, dark shadow kind of popping off now. Uh, well, let me not get ahead of myself. Okay, so next step, we want to take this shadow on down. We want some really dramatic lighting. And so I'm going to duplicate that layer with Command or Control J. And then I'm going to go back to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. And this time I'm going to set it to 50 pixels. And you can see here that it takes it further out, but it also brings it up here. And so just the quick way to get rid of these uh, shadowed edges that we don't want is to again hold down shift and press uh, the down arrow and right arrow and you can see it moves it out of the way and we get this great uh, kind of a drop off of the shadow. So we've got our hard shadow edges and then we've got a softer one. We're going to duplicate that layer one more time and then we're going to press command or control F. And what that does is it just reruns the last filter that you used with the same settings. So you don't have to keep going back through the menu structure. All right, and I'm going to drop the opacity on that one down to about 30% to lighten it up. 
And so there we go. We've got a pretty cool effect already. So now one thing to keep in mind here is that we want to imagine a light source, right? So what is casting these shadows? Uh, and I talked about this in a previous tutorial. You know, you want to imagine that you've got a light source. Uh, say there's a light bulb over here. It's kind of off camera. And so the light is coming down at a 45 degree angle, uh, angle from the upper left. So your shadow is going to go at a 45 degree angle from the bottom right. Okay, so let me get rid of that. So what we want to do is on our text layer, can double click on the or over to the side of the text and it'll bring up your layer style palette we're going to go ahead and add a gradient overlay and uh, you want it to be about the same color or slightly less than your background and rather than going to harsh white we're going to drop that down just a little bit so it's more of a subtle shadow or more of a subtle gradient rather Okay, and uh, gonna leave everything here in the settings about the same, except we're gonna set this to 96 degrees. And what that's gonna do is rather than being a straight up and down uh, gradient, it's gonna be coming from the upper left, which is where, of course, our light source is. The next thing we're gonna do, let me zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing, is we're going to add an inner shadow. Now, obviously an inner shadow doesn't work for what we're trying to accomplish here that looks kind of weird. Uh, but what we'll do is rather than do multiply, we'll go to normal for the blend mode and we'll set it to white. And then for the distance, we're gonna say two pixels. And for the size, we're gonna drop that down to zero. And what that does is gives us a nice hard edge and makes the text appear uh, to have a little bit of dimension to it. Go ahead and hit OK. So right there we got something pretty cool to work with. Now the problem is of course that we've got this really uh, dimensioned text um, on a really flat background. So we need to, to make that background just a little bit more dramatic to show the difference in our lighting source. So let's pick a color that's, you know, um, dramatically different from your background color, or darker rather, and then select your gradient tool. I'm gonna set the mode to normal, and make sure up here that this is set to fade to transparent. When you see the little uh, check boxes in the background, you'll know that it's set to transparent. And so I'm gonna start, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor here, but I'm gonna start slightly off uh, of the screen click and drag up at about a 45 degree angle from the bottom left and the upper right and you can see it looks like we've got kind of a channel of light coming down and then also from the bottom we're going to come up straight that way it kind of appears that we've got some drop off in our lighting so we've got a spot it's up here somewhere and it's shining down and kind of drops off after it gets after it hits these letters it's going to kind of fade out here now i'm going to set the blending mode to multiply and what this will do is kind of with the same color selected give us a darker uh, overlay of the gradient so I'm going to go at that same angle at each corner and then again from the bottom corner and from the bottom again and so you can see that we're kind of defining where the light is coming from. So pretty cool. We've got a good composition here. It's all black and white. If that's the look and feel you're going for, uh, kind of a film noir look, then you're all set. But we're going to go a little bit further. And with the background layer selected, now we're going to go to filter noise and add noise. Set your amount to 3% with a Gaussian distribution, monochromatic, and hit OK. And you can see that we get this nice film grain effect in the background. Just kind of adds to the whole feeling. Next, we'll add some additional text. Just like in our example, we said preach the vintage gospel. So we'll add that preach text. 
HD. And this is another font from Lost Type called Wisdom, Wisdom Script. And it is huge, so let me change that and dial it in a little bit. Place that centered. And then one more bit of text. Here we go. As seen in Bible. And this will be Edmund script or Edmund Sands rather, which is, you guessed it, another free font from Lost Type Collective. So I'm gonna set this one to bold and take it way down in size. And then change our uh, tracking just a little bit here. Center that bad boy up. And there we've got our title. So now what I'm gonna do is skew this text so it's all set on an angle. Now our original inspiration wasn't set on an angle, but as we scroll down our uh, screenshots here, you can kind of see that there are some that are that are set that way. Um, I like that look personally. I think it adds a little bit of visual interest, and it's not quite so straight laced. Um, so we're going to select all of our layers with text and our shadows and then hit Command or Control T, and that's gonna bring up the free transform handles. And then, holding down the Command and the Shift keys, grab the center handle on, the, on either side, and then also hold down Alt. And I'm gonna skew it about eight degrees, nine degrees, somewhere in there. Maybe not that much, there we go. Let's go with eight degrees. And by holding down all those keys, it constrains your proportions, and it also uh, makes both sides move in opposite directions. So if I had only held down the uh, command and the shift keys, you can see it would have only skewed the one side. If I hadn't held down the shift key, then it would have let me skew everything. Uh, so I, I definitely want to constrain the proportions, that way it doesn't get all whacked out, and hold down Alt, and it just makes it easier uh, to get it all kind of symmetrical. Okay, so let go of all those keys and then to commit the changes just double click anywhere inside the bounding box. All right, looking pretty good. Put it in the center again. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is add our, our color in. So click on the background layer and create a new layer by clicking the new layer icon uh, or uh, Command Shift N, Control Shift N if you're on a PC. And we're going to pick to match our other screen, kind of a teal, uh, bluish green color. Okay, I'm going to fill that entire layer and then set the blend mode to multiply. That way the color is laid on top of all the pixels underneath it, uh, which is this nice grayscale ramp. Um, so it plays really nicely with color that you're dropping through multiplied. Okay, we're almost done. So the next thing we're going to do is grab this grunge texture. And uh, actually, I've already saved it, so let me go back to Photoshop. Uh, that link, by the way, is in the blog tutorial. And so we're going to go File, Place. And you could, of course, just... Uh, copy this in, but there's our scratches overlay, so I'm going to say place, and then I'm going to resize it how I want, and then double click to commit those changes. Now I put this uh, toward the bottom of our stack, so it's all behind the text. I want this over the text, so we're going to drag it to the top, and then set the mode to overlay, and there we go. Uh, now, to get it exactly as I have it here, this preach the gospel or preach the uh, text, you're going to select that layer and set the color of that text to kind of a lightish green yellow color. We'll go with something kind of limey that plays well with that teal color. And same for the text for as seen in the Bible. Kind of a limeish green. If you want, you can set the blending mode on that to overlay or to uh, soft light. 
and it's just gonna kind of fade it a little bit play in that same color family and there you have it we can preach the vintage gospel with our throwback retro title card uh, look and feel here uh, shouldn't take very long once you've got the uh, technique down so hope you enjoyed it learned lots leave comments uh, on the blog if you have any questions i'm happy to answer them and thanks for watching